the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Dr. Luz shares her holistic approach to parenting on purpose. Learn how personal healing can enhance every aspect of your life in episode 106. Mm. So we, from zero to seven, we just do not have the cognitive capacity to understand all that's going around around us. So either things become either yes or no, or safe or unsafe. And even if the things that um, feel that should be safe uh, are the things that we want to do, we're not going to do them because in our childhoods, those things were meant to be unsafe. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I think I got a little twisted there, but I I understand what you're saying. So we don't even know the program is running. It's on a subconscious level, but what we can see is the results that are in our lives. And we're not, we don't have that speed to action. We don't have that speed to manifestation that we could have. We hear other people having it, but it's not happening in our lives. It's like we're living in the mud of it all. And that's because of these unconscious programs that are holding us in these, in these patterns. And Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast, a space where stories of strength, resilience and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch. I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we've got a very special episode tailored just for you. Whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself, I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope and a reminder that you are not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share their story that resonates with the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience and unwavering strength. It lies within each and every one of us. So settle in, take a deep breath and let the healing begin. But before we dive into today's amazing episode, uh, just a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing and sharing and, and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach more hearts and spread the message of healing. I'd like to introduce our very special guest today, Dr. Luz. I'm going to ask a few more questions about that. Uh, She's in the field of education and she's been in that space for more than 20 years. As a teacher and a principal and a professor, she has coached and mentored hundreds of parents. Her unique holistic approach to coaching includes life purpose, healing from childhood trauma, positive psychology and human development. She creates a nurturing space where parents can share and explore their their health and their healing. Hello and welcome to the podcast, Dr. Luz. Hi, Charlene. It's so good to to talk to you and your community. It is a very important topic. Um, I, for one, am somebody that is really interested in helping parents create spaces where they can not only um, raise their children. So what I like to say is that the purpose of parenting isn't just to raise good humans. It's to raise ourselves to our highest potential and often what that means is facing some of the some of what we experience as little people. So I've also been on my own healing journey, and I shared that a little bit with you before we started. Um, so I'm happy to talk a little bit about how um, my own experience of childhood trauma actually becomes my superpower and becomes what I've used to propel me in my career working with children and families. I love that. I love that. It's important to share life experiences. And isn't it fascinating that we put ourselves into situations where we get to learn the lessons that we need to learn? And uh, and this is a perfect example. Can you please unpack that for us? 
Yes. So I'm actually in the Montessori um, kind of space. I've been a Montessori teacher and charter school leader. And um, if you know anything about Montessori, you're there in Australia, there's a huge Montessori uh, movement there. Montessori is all about mastery based learning. And I like to say that the world and our lives are mastery based learning systems. We are put on this planet to learn life lessons. This is different than saying everything is drawn out for us or also saying that we brought things on onto ourselves. I don't want to have that message out there, but we are asked, we are put on this planet to become whole humans. And part of that is that we are put, we are asking for life lessons and sometimes they're ones that are pretty difficult, but these life lessons that we experience through trauma can be our superpowers. So my story is that I experienced childhood trauma um, as a, um, my parents, just to kind of talk about that, were immigrants from the Philippines in um, the late 60s. And, you know, they were living that life. They were trying to um, begin a life. Both of them were professionals. So we've got a couple of things happening. We've got two professionals. So parents outside of the home in a time in the 1970s when women were just entering the workforce. So we've got, we've got that. <laughs> two parents out of the household trying to raise young people. We've also got the trauma of immigrating. And let's talk about that because people in general would love to stay in the, in the countries where they were born circumstances sometimes arise where it becomes um, not, a, it becomes not the place of optimal opportunity. And that's where my parents found themselves in. So just through that, um, I experienced, um, you know, emotional, uh, emotional neglect. My parents just weren't there. This is not to say, and that's the other thing I want to talk about when we talk about trauma. Sometimes when, um, People don't want to talk about trauma because they feel that they had a pretty good life. And so it feels bad to talk about it because it feels like we're betraying our parents or we're turning our backs on them or we're, um, or, or we're going against them. The deal with trauma is that life is, um, we can't escape it. We are in contact with humans that cannot be inside of us. Plus they're human. They can't be with us in the ways that we need them to. You know, um, I'm a parent and my experience had been that when my children were crying, I couldn't always pick them up. And that's not to say that you've always got to pick your children up, but we all come out um, of childhood with some things that we need to deal with. And what I needed to deal with was, was the fact that my parents were not available to me. They were undergoing a lot of stress and those are things that I had to work through. So because of what happened um, for me as, a, as an infant and as um, in my early zero to three time, which is prior to my grandparents um, being able to immigrate. So my parents were alone out here, um, out in the, in the U.S. And so that was a really tough time. And that's, uh, that's obviously, as you know, such a pivotal time for child development. So when I talk about that, what are those things? So for me, I am somebody who's keenly aware of what we need to do for young children. Had I not experienced what I experienced as a child, I wouldn't have that perspective. I'm also somebody who has a big heart for parents because I've gone through my own internal family systems work. I've gone through trauma therapy. I've done a lot of things for my own mental health to, so that I can understand and be um, compassionate for those um, who were part of the trauma experience that I had. Mm. Yeah. I love it. So, you know, basically you're saying that life happens for us rather than to yes. us. And yes. it's that opportunity to sort of see that because if we're living below the line and we're living as a victim, we it's always, it's done to us, it's done to us. You know, my parents do so. I'm a firstborn of Irish immigrants and I get it and I get it. 
so uh so but when we're able to shift how we see things and use language like this happened for me then we can come from more an empowered space coming from a victor space and we, it just changes the narrative and the stories are no longer done to you they're done for me and it really lifts us up to be in that place of empowerment and i know survivors that are listening today that's a tough pill to swallow this was done for me mm, yeah whatever Yes, and if you can shift even just one degree and see a different perspective and, you know, the rawer we are to, the, to, to, you know, the bleeding wound, the harder it is for us to see that. And myself and many of our listeners know that my beautiful baby boy committed suicide and that's why I'm doing this, what I do, is so that I can shift uh, the level of awareness but I wasn't able to see all of that when I was in the thick of it. So know that all of these things that we're talking about, sometimes they happen after the healing. And, uh, and yeah, I, and I love this, what Dr. Luz is talking about, is that we're looking at not just our own childhood challenges, but we're looking at what are we doing as parents to create an environment that's going to help our children not have to go through those family patterns and, and learn that life lesson that we had to learn. I love that. I love everything that you're talking about. So can you tell us a little bit more about how people work with you, Dr. Luz? So, yeah. So what I do is I create, um, as you said in the intro, a holistic situa a, a holistic program. So oftentimes the biggest thing for young people is to understand and feel safe. If um, your listeners know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's really on that baseline. Be below all of the physical needs or just above the physical needs is the feeling of safety and belonging. And so what tends to happen with parents is they have the best of intentions of what they want to create in their family and where they have the most difficulty is around consistency. Consistency feels like and we know this from, from studies on human motivation and um, positive psychology, that safety for children actually means consistency. So if consistently I know and feel that I am loved and cared for, I come out of that zero to three space mm. feeling more confident in my own being. Mm. We have developmental goals I like to call them. We have goals for each developmental phase. And if those needs aren't met during that phase, we have a difficult time moving, um, continuing to blossom and grow. So when I work with parents, what I look at is what is underneath the inconsistency. And often underneath that, that consistency or the inconsistency are beliefs. So if I grew up, and I grew up in a family where there was a lot of conflict. To me, maybe conflict wasn't okay. Maybe yelling wasn't okay. Maybe I say to myself, I don't want to be mean. So when I'm trying to be consistent with my children, and this happens um, you know, when they're toddlers, they have their own minds and that's part of their developmental stage. They have to be able to discern for themselves what they want and don't want. And that's often in conflict with what we need and want in parents. So again, if I if I had a situation where it was unsafe to be to yell or scream or be angry, then when I'm feeling those things in response to my child, I might back away, even though it's important to set limits. So I really wanna set limits. I wanna make sure that my children are safe. I wanna make sure that my children understand what how they need to be it, as a functioning member of society, but there's this big need underneath that I don't want to be mean. That's my belief. So that underlying belief, which is running in the background, it's like when you have, you know, when you have a, a, uh, your computer and it's got all of these high, these, these programs running in the background and it just gets really slow if you experience that. This is like that, those underlying beliefs keep us from doing the things we want because they're running in the background. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things that I want to help parents with to know that it is okay to set limit limits. It is okay to say no and to under, to excavate what is underneath our um, what's keeping us from being consistent and providing the kind of structure that children need. 
Um, some of that, as we're linking it to healing, comes from our own wounding in our childhood. Mm. So we, from zero to seven, we just do not have the cognitive capacity to understand all that's going around around us. So either things become either yes or no or safe or unsafe. Mm. And even if the things that um, feel that should be safe uh, are the things that we want to do, we're not going to do them because in our childhoods, those things were meant to be unsafe. Mm -hmm. I, so, I mean, I think I got a little twisted there, but no, yeah. but I, I understand what you're saying. So we don't even know the program is running. It's on a subconscious level, but what we can see is the results that are in our lives. And we're not, we don't have that speed to action. We don't have that speed to manifestation that we could have. We hear other people having it, but it's not happening in our lives. It's like we're living in the mud of it all. And that's because of these unconscious programs that are holding us in these, in these patterns. Exactly. And working with Dr. Lars, what that does is it, you know, bring that level of awareness to the patterns so that you can lie all your cards on the table you can make a conscious decision about how you want to work and how you want to move moving forward and then you're not repeating these patterns to your children so uh, on every level this is really important work whether you're listening to us today and you're coming from a trauma base or you've got a trauma that you're still dealing with regardless of where you are on that healing journey, if you've got little humans in your proximity, whether they're inside the, the zero to seven or outside it, there's still work that you can do here with Dr. Lars. Yes. To help those family patterns, those subconscious family patterns that we don't even have a level of awareness um, to relive. And remember, they don't necessarily need to be from this life. So for those of you who are listening today and, you know, you're on the woo side and, you know, you believe in past lives, then it could be, that this is not even a this life expression. So the how you find that it'll be in your in your subconscious. Yeah. So I love everything that you do. This is amazing. And uh, now I just want to get it really firm here. Are you only working with children uh, with parents that have got zero to seven, or are you working with them post that as well? I am working with um, parents who have children of any age because the determining factor is not the developmental stage of the child. It's the readiness and willingness of the parent. And that can happen if you have little ones. It can happen if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. It doesn't matter. What you have to feel is a yearning, a yearning to heal yourself and to be whole. Mm. And it is never too late. I have worked with parents of middle schoolers, parents of high school students, Sometimes there's a lot going on with the with their young people. And when we have a stronger base in ourselves, mm -hmm. we can role model for our, our young people what it means to work through problems. And it's a lot um, faster than telling them. Like middle yeah. schoolers, high schoolers, they don't want to be told how to do anything. But if they see you in the struggle they see that this is something that is worthy of their attention and their effort. I love that. I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. So if you're listening today and, you know, you're getting some, some value from this, please reach out to Dr. Lars, who's going to in a moment share with us her closing words. But if you're listening today and you are a practitioner or you're a survivor yourself, know that Healing Through Love are creating pamper days, not just locally here in South Australia, but also globally. So we have an army of women on the ground creating these beautiful pamper days that really hold the frequency for healing. And they're a great way to pay it forward. And they're also a great way to help hold that proximity for women to heal. And just to show that you care, and the stories that have blossomed from these experiences have been life-changing for not just the people that come and participate, but also the exhibitors themselves. So if that resonates with you, please reach out to us no matter what corner of the world you're in, because we are currently educating people on how to run these in your local proximity and the training is free. So we'd love to have you on board. When you're listening to this podcast, please reach out because uh, we are looking for people that are heart-centered just like you and have a heart for change and a soul driven to take us this journey of healing through love on a more global scale. I love that. Now, in closing, Dr. Lars, what are your words of wisdom you'd like to share with our audience? I'm going to say what I've said to many people over the years. It is never too late to heal. It's never too late. 
no matter what time of life you're in, no matter what you're facing, it is so worth the effort to claim your fullness and to do the work of healing. And I think the hardest thing is just starting that journey because it seems like overwhelming, but you are in a community. I mean, you're listening to this podcast because you want to be in community with people who are either doing the hard work, thinking about doing the hard work, or who are a little bit on their way. So find a community, take that first little step and claim your healing. I love that. I love that. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much for taking the time and listening to us today on Healing Through Love. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to bring you another amazing guest. Thank you very much, Dr. Lars. That's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Dr. Lars. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast. Oh,